we've been learning a lot about linear regression and uh, regressions in general. Pretty soon we're gonna be learning about uh, classifications, which is the other big kind of um, supervised learning. But in between, I wanted to spend a week on linear algebra. And for linear algebra, we're gonna be using this thing called NumPy. And this is going to help us understand what's actually going on with the linear regression and uh, the classification that's from the auth. Um, it turns out NumPy shows up everywhere. We've been using it without really realizing it. Um, and so just to give a simple example, I have a data frame here. And if I want to look inside of that data frame, I can say dot values. And I get this thing, which it turns out is a NumPy array. You can see actually these are all the same, uh, same values up here. If I look up here, I have these numbers here. Those are showing up down here as well inside of this array thing. And I can see that this belongs to NumPy if I actually say, well, what is the type of that? Hey, it's a NumPy ND array. So we're going to want to be learning how to work with these directly so we can um, um, do different kinds of math with them and, and really kind of understand what's going on. Um, also, so here I'm doing a linear regression. I'm, I'm fitting it to the X columns and Y column of my data frame above. It turns out whenever I do that, I also get these things like coefficient underscore, and that's an NumPy array, and then also um, I'll have something like this, which is just a number. And um, it turns out that these things can be used to do predictions. So right now, if I do something like this, if I say LR, maybe I'll just leave that there actually. Um, if I say something like LR.predict, and, and maybe for my predictions, I'll just say, um, I wanna do DF and then I'll say X1 and then um, X2. I'm going to make those predictions. And if I wanted to, I could actually be doing that directly on the values um, underlying it. <coughs> Where do these predictions come from? Well, it turns out it's a little bit of linear algebra um, underlying this, and we're eventually going to learn that al algebra. But I could say something like this. I could say, let me, let me peek at this. I have this matrix here, and I could say, this, and this is um, an operator we're going to be learning soon, which is called the dot product. It's very uh, important in linear algebra. I could say that dot uh, coefficient plus LR dot intercept. And you can see I'm getting exactly the same predictions as before, right? So um, we can see that linear algebra, which we should learn, is very fundamental to prediction and other parts of machine learning. So maybe you're getting the sense that arrays are the most important thing that we're going to be getting from NumPy, and that's correct. Um, there's lots of different ways we can um, uh, create arrays. Um, I can create them directly if I import NumPy. And, and just like we often um, import pandas as PD, where I import NumPy as NP. And so I can say things like NumPy.array, and I could pass in a list, for example, uh, 789. And, um, and that would work fine, right? So lists are one way to um, pass it in. Um, I could say I want to have a, um, a NumPy array that contains a bunch of zeros, right? So I could say I want um, eight zeros. Um, it's maybe not obvious why I would need this now. It'll eventually become clear. Um, I could create one with, which has a bunch of ones in it. Um, another very powerful thing is that it has a more um, extensive version of the range um, method that, or the range function that comes with Python. So we will often use range like this. Um, and if I convert that to a list, I can actually see what numbers we have. So a range of 10 gives me zero to nine in um, the regular Python function. Uh, but it turns out I can do a few things. I can say, I wanna start at a specific point, uh, end at a specific point, and then I can have some sort of step, right? So I could say, I can say something like this, for example, maybe I want all the even numbers between 10 and 20, and to make them even, I would do a step of, of two, right? If I did a three, then you can see it would draw 10, 13, 16, I'm just gonna put it back to, for two for now. Um, one of the things I cannot do in uh, uh, with the range is I can't do something like this. I can't say zero to one and then 0 0.1. It turns out the range only works with integers, not floats. Um, so it turns out that NumPy actually has something that um, works like this, it's called a range, I could say numpy.a range. And now I see that works just fine. So it's a little bit more um, uh, flexible and, and powerful. Um, let's talk a little bit about slicing because I think this actually will um, kind of cause a lot of confusion. So if I if I do something like this, let's say I create a list like this. And, um, and by the way, when I'm doing a list, the same thing, I have a start, 
an end and uh, a step, even though normally we've just been doing these two parts. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I, I want to take a slice of something. So maybe I'm going to call that A and then I'll call my slice B. Um, let me also actually just create an A here. So I'll say A is 7, 8, 9, 10. So I could go from, let's say, position um, 0. Um, and then I could leave this. Actually, sorry, I meant to have um, colons there as well. That's how we do slicing. With range, I have commas. And then with um, slicing, I have colons. Um, I could leave that blank if I want to go to the end. And I can say like a step of 2. right? So right now, that would give me... Um, seven and nine. Right? So it starts at position zero and steps two at a time in terms of index. I could do this and then I would start at position one and then step two. So that would give me 10. All right, so I can do that. Um, so, so it turns out that um, right now I have this A. Let me, maybe I should just I'm gonna delete this so it's a little bit more clear what's going on. Um, right now these things are just completely different Python lists. And so for example, if I do something like this, if I say B of um, one equals 100, and then I look at B, uh, B changes, but A does not, right? They're decoupled, right? This is not 100. Um, it, it turns out it's maybe a little bit different with NumPy arrays or, or with slices of NumPy arrays. So if I do this, I say NumPy.array like that. And now I'm taking a slice of that. Then what will happen is if I actually change this, I say that equals 100. There's my B. Turns out A changes too. So watch for that, right? When I'm doing slicing, I'm not creating new objects um, in NumPy. They still have the same um, underlying values beneath. Um, okay, so everything I've shown so far in this video is um, a one-dimensional um, NumPy array. In the upcoming videos, we're going to talk about how we can have multi-dimensional NumPy arrays called matrices, or more generally tensors. And we can do those, use those for lots of interesting things like um, um, image analysis, for example. So um, stay tuned.